Today I talked to a lovely 19 year old young lady who has been leaning into what I teach and it drastically changed her relationship, complete 180 from fighting every day. She started using my advice two weeks ago. No fights in two weeks. Thank you, love the dress, thank you. I love it, it's embroidered. It's, uh, you. oh man, I love this one. I love the embroidery, it's so nice, so, so nice. You look lovely, thank you. A guy I'm dating is interested in swinging once a year. I'm not opposed to it, but do you have advice? I actually do. Um, so here's the thing. Uh, there's a lot of different ways you can go about this. Uh, I have brought my husband's, both of them, to swingers clubs, not because I wanted to swing, but because I enjoy being an exhibitionist and a voyeur. So I introduce both of them to that aspect of my sexuality. It's okay for you to explore your sexuality at will, right? Um, if this is something you want to do, then go ahead and do it, but talk about your rules beforehand. Don't change them on the spot um, because you might regret it. That's like a heat of the moment kind of thing. So make sure that you guys have all the parameters ironed out before you show up to these places. Oh, I just bought your book, Fix That Shit. Love it. Love it. Follow the host. Thank you. Masa. Um, I, I love that. Guys, Fix That Shit is also an audiobook now. You can only get it through the link tree in my bio though. Should I take my ex back when he broke up because he lost feelings because of his bad mental health and now he wants back? So the question is, is the change evident? Has he changed or does he want you back because he's lonely? Uh, so make sure that the change is evident. Also read Fix That Shit so that you both understand how to have a relationship that is functional and good for both of your mental health. I love your video. So I was wondering how long you wait for someone before you move on. You never stay in limbo. Uh, never stay in limbo, my love. We shall learn your advice back when I was 19. We love to see yes. Uh, the name of my podcast is my dating and relationship podcast. You will find the links to that in the link tree in my bio. So go ahead and click those and start following my podcast and my YouTube channel. Guys, who wants a notification when I go live? Say, I do. Are you from Toronto? I'm near Toronto. I would never live in Toronto though. I, I can't. I like, I like, I like, I like my scenery. Um, I don't like the concrete jungle and I find Toronto is the, is the concretest of concrete jungles. Okay, my loves, those of you who want a notification when I go live, click my picture up here. Once or twice, you're going to get a pop-up and the pop-up is a bell. Click on the bell when you do that. See, I just did. I've been with my boyfriend for five months and he treats me amazing. I feel like it's too good to be true. Don't tell yourself that. Your mantra is, yes, goodness, thank you, I accept you. Yes, goodness, thank you, I accept you. Yes, goodness, thank you, I accept you. Every time you feel uncomfortable, this is too good. Yes, goodness, thank you, I accept you. Don't, don't have your dialogue say, this is too good to be true because what you believe is, right? So you're going to set yourself up for failure that way. Instead, Accept the goodness. Yes, goodness. Thank you. I accept you. This is the reality where everything is amazing. Make this goodness your new familiar so that this new familiar becomes your new light. That's what you want. How do I book a session with you? What a, what a good question. Go to my bio, click on the link tree. There is a coaching button in there. Pretty much the first one. Click on that. It takes you to a page. Follow the three steps on the page to book yourself in for a session. GTA represent. He's here. My boyfriend wants us to move back to Scotland. I'm okay with it, but it's a big change. Advice or thoughts? Um, have everything figured out before. Like, what does that mean? Where are we gonna live? Um, you know, who pays for what? What are the costs gonna be? Like, really, kind of put yourself in there. 
and and live it before you go so that it doesn't feel like such a huge shift for you scotland sounds exciting it's beautiful uh i've never been but i saw the pictures gorgeous uh me and my ex lost our car to each other we've been on and off for six years not together uh crazy for thinking of him okay come get a coaching session my love that's that's you know pretty deep um and this is something we need to deprogram in you and i can't do that on a live i would need to do that in a coaching session how do you deal with losing feelings but still wanting to be with that person ask yourself why right ask yourself why um love the pictures in the background these are my book covers these are five six six of my books i wrote eight um so ask, you, ask yourself why. Like, why do I still want to be with them? Is it because it's familiar? Is it because I fear finding someone else? Uh, is, is it because I'm just, you know, used to them? Is it because I don't want to be lonely? Uh, if you really want to delve into this and figure it out, I would suggest you get a coaching session. Uh, I just spoke up with my boyfriend. He says I interrogate him when I ask him questions. I don't feel I do. Uh, so here's the thing, um, you probably do, right? Uh, but the question is why? Is it because you're insecure and, or is it because you got with an untrustworthy partner or, you know, which, which one is it? Uh, is it because he's somebody who's quite secretive? Is he doing things behind your back, right? So if you have a trustworthy partner and you're always questioning them then yes it does feel like an interrogation it feels like this is a peer to child relationship not a or like a parent child relationship not a peer peer relationship i had to learn to stop you know wanting to know every single detail about what my husband did when he wasn't with me because the reason why i wanted to know that was because i was insecure not because he was not trustworthy and it was frustrating for him that I was always questioning where he was, who he talked to, what he said. Uh, and he, he just wanted to relax his brain when he was with me because most men want to be in the moment. So I, I really had to learn to become more secure and be okay with the gaps of information, knowing that if I really thought about it, it's not that he was doing anything wrong in those gaps. And so I could relax about those gaps. How did he you choose your career? It chose me. It chose me. Uh, I, I've always been a guru for people. I've always been the kind of person that, you know, frightened, insecure animals, right? Human or not felt better around. So it's, I, it's since my twenties, I've been giving people advice and they've always said within 10 minutes, I feel so much better. You're so soothing. So it really has been my talent for a super long time. I just decided to brand. Do I believe in fate? I, I certainly believe that, uh, you know, things will cross our paths that are meant for us. Greetings from Serbia. Hello. Do I have to wish my ex happy birthday? We haven't spoken in months. I'm not sure if I should. No, absolutely not. I wanted my boyfriend to text me in the morning and put my ego aside and started doing fix that shit. Look at you. Look at you. How do I recover from the heartbreak pain after breakup? It was necessary to do, but I'm so sad. Yes, my love, I got you. Come back queen is a book that's going to help you with that. This is the process of how to get your emotions back on track and feel empowered and happy again. What does it mean when your girlfriend becomes distant with you? Uh, it depends on the context. It really depends on the context. Sometimes people get distant because they're stressed. Sometimes people get distant because they're hormonal. Even men can get hormonal. Uh, sometimes people get distant because they're trying to work through something in their head. Thanks for informing me. You're welcome. First time on here. Hey. Are dating apps good? I think people in my generation are too anxious to approach someone in person. I think dating apps are great. Um, very useful. We just need to understand how to navigate them well. Greetings from 
NM, New Mexico. Did I get it? Did I get it? Uh, how do I tell my mother-in-law I don't want to talk about or agree with her ideals without ruining the relationship? That's a good one. Uh, Corrine, do you want to come live with me? Open it up. I'm going to open it up. If you want to come live with me, let me know. Hello. Hi, loves. How are you? Can we talk about why it's rare for a guy to be platonic friends with a girl? Um... So I do have male friends who are platonic friends with girls. Um, I think maybe why it's rare is because uh, there are so many people who are selfish short-term thinkers and who use other people as ego strokes. He's more private and I'm more open. I asked about a job he applied for and he freaked out. But here's the thing, it, this didn't happen in a bubble, right? Um, it's not like, like the first time you asked a question, he freaked out. So if you do want to figure it out, uh, I would suggest you get a coaching session. For insecurities, what book I would recommend? All of my books help deal with insecurities. Um, if you're in a relationship, fix that shit. If you're single, no more assholes. I feel like my boyfriend is always on my on his phone when we hang out. Um, so phone, you know, used to be TV, right? It's not like when boyfriends and girlfriends got together before phones, they would just sit across from each other and like gaze lovingly into each other's eyes. Before it was phones, we would sit and watch TV together. So, um, right? As, uh, <laughs> we are often occupied beside each other. We are often occupied beside each other. If you want quality time, maybe that's your love language. Uh, something you can do is do a love language quiz together. Do it at the same time. Exchange your results. Fight for what your love language is. If you're if you're going to fight for something, right? Um, it may be that you want more of his time because you're looking for, um, you know more conversations but are you bringing good conversations to the table do you offer private sessions for couples yes i do if you want to book yourself in for a couple session just hit that coaching button in the link tree in my bio it takes you to a page follow the instructions you can book yourself in for a session also from new mexico hello do, do. Oh boy, my boyfriend has a rude tone of voice when he's mad. He says it's because he has a reason to do it. I tell him he needs to fix his tone of voice. Is this okay? So this does, does this not literally take you back to a parent-child relationship? Fix your tone of voice. Get that look off your face, right? Now, do you want a parent-child relationship or do you want a peer-peer relationship? Uh, it's listen if your boyfriend comes home mad and speaks to you in a rude way It's okay for you to say that's not fair because you weren't the source of that if you two get in an argument if you two have a fight and He has a rude tone of voice. Why don't you address what the fights are about and eliminate the fights eliminate the conflict instead of and you know really growing the conflict into not only we're fighting about this but we also need to fight about your tone of voice young man you better fix that don't you dare talk to me that way right parent child relationship don't treat your partner like a child you will never have a peer peer relationship if you treat your partner like a child you will have a peer peer relationship when you come at them like an adult and say let's resolve conflict like adults so that means getting to the core of what the issues are about and resolving the issues instead of shifting the focus onto the symptom of the issues 
and and really diverting away from the issue and going okay no we gotta we, we better fix this right now because i don't like how you're talking to me so really you want to eliminate the conflict my love more than anything it's not about the tone of voices about the fact that there's conflict I'm not sure how to go live there should be a button in there me and you need to debate what do we need to debate about My boyfriend said long distance is in his forte and that's why he doesn't put much effort into planning dates. So that's one thing we need to accept when we get into a relationship is that I have strengths and you have weaknesses. You have strengths and you have weaknesses or and I have weaknesses, right? Like if we need to come together like puzzle pieces, right? So is your strength planning dates? Exercise your strength. Is that their weakness? Accept their weakness. What is their strength? What is their contribution to the relationship? If they have zero strength that they're contributing to the relationship, you're not in a good relationship. We need to bring things to the table, but again, willingly give your strengths and, and stop saying, hey, I do this, this is my strength, this needs to be your strength too. This is like report cards at school, which by the way is why so many people are working jobs that they hate because they were set up in an educational system that distracted them from their strengths and told them to focus on their weaknesses which creates a whole lot of miserable people right now. So you want to do the same thing with your boyfriend. Hey, I'm grading your report card. I, I don't give a shit about your strengths. I'm really just, I'm pushing that aside. Forget that. Your weaknesses, you need to work harder on that. You need to focus more on that. And this is how you create a relationship filled with frustration, dissatisfaction, and unfulfillment. I will thank you. I'm definitely not being transparent with my own beliefs, which is unfair, my love. I live from Hawaii. My ex wants me to be loyal to him and keeps asking for more time, but never changes. Do I leave? He's your ex. You're already gone. It's now time for you to say, stop contacting me because all you're doing is playing me. All you're doing is wanting me to be on hold for you for some selfish reason. All you're doing is interrupting my day and my train of thought and my flow towards evolution and goodness. And I'm not up for this anymore. You need to leave me alone because you are not a part of my growth and my evolution. You are stunting me. You are getting in the way between me and happiness. And it stops today. Yeah, I love catching your lies. Is it okay to look through each other's phone? He asked to see my phone occasionally. That's fine if you're allowed to see his, right? If he's as transparent as he wants you to be, then that's fine. Um, comes a point though, after you guys have done this, that you need to start saying to yourself, I know what I need to know. Otherwise you're simply vomiting insecurity into the relationship and that's not good. California in the house. I need your serenity right now. I will infect you. I'm a Gemini. Good advice. My boyfriend has a hard time transitioning from work to home and I've learned to give him space. That's wonderful. Yes. Your perspective helped me so much. How do I appreciate more my husband and let him be? Oh, oh this is so beautiful. I gotta read this. Uh, your perspective helped me so much. Now I appreciate more my husband and let him be. And I am happier. Mwah! I love you. I love you. I want to do um, I want to do a Zoom. I want to do a public Zoom, but I want it to be um, uh, formatted. Basically, I want to do like, like a public Zoom and have everybody who feels like I've helped them in their relationship, either through watching my lives, reading my books, watching my TikToks, you know, whatever, whatever, my podcast, my YouTube channel, anybody who's applied my advice, whatever source they got it from, and it's had an impact on their relationship, I want to have all these people come on to a Zoom call and just let other people watch in while we have this conversation about what you did and how it changed things for you. You're schooling us. Yes, I am. I am. I am a teacher at heart. Is it possible for someone to not have a love language? Um, if, if somebody loves someone, they're going to show it in some way, shape or form. 
at the very least it'll show up in wanting to be with them thank you for the gifts the very least it'll show up in just wanting to be around them wait for no one that's right hey hello love madeline so madeline is on so black ladder here you guys that's madeline she just taped a uh, uh an episode with me so we we take that today i'm gonna turn it into a podcast and a, a youtube video um so that you guys can learn what madeline has learned which is really fascinating she's 19 she's been you know following my my videos for a little bit but really applied my advice for the past two weeks and she went from fighting on a near daily basis to not a single fight in the last two weeks My, brother, my boyfriend told me he started to want going to parties and that makes me feel anxious. Is that bad? That's your insecurity, right? That is your insecurity. Did you choose a trustworthy partner? If the answer is yes, then you need to deal with your emotions instead of vomiting. It's Listen, we will have anxious moments. We will have fearful moments. It's bad when you vomit them onto your partner, when you exhibit them in controlling behaviors, when you turn it into anger. Um, and you make them pay for the emotions you have inside of you that you're not dealing with. Um, that's when it becomes bad. It also becomes bad if you if you say you don't vomit, but you don't deal with it, you don't reduce it, and now this creates a ton of negativity inside of you. You might not be saying something out loud, but you're you're in a very bad emotional state, and that does come off your energy, and it does affect your behaviors, even if you're not actually saying something. Oh my god yes what advice do you have for women dating a younger man yeah he should be at least 24 if uh you know she's not taking advantage of him why do i feel insecure about myself even though he tells me he finds me beautiful and loves me every day um because uh you are not addressing your insecurities so if you do want to deal with that i have a no more insecurity program that you can sign up for in the link tree in my bio Chantal, you must have felt my energy needing you today because I thought of you earlier and here you are. My love. I have a note section, one of your advice. That's awesome. Uh, that's awesome. I will thank you. I definitely not being transparent. Yes. You guys are adorable. I have a note section of your advice. I love that. Uh, love it. Can two people with different love languages work? 100%. Yeah, my husband is acts of service. I'm words of affirmation. I translate his acts of service. Fill my love bank up that way. He's very good with his acts of service. What if your partner wants to take a break, but you don't? What do you think of break? So break is a breakup. We don't need permission to break up with anybody, right? If somebody doesn't want to be with someone anymore, it's not that other person's choice. We all have freedom of movement. You can't say, no, I'm not letting you break up with me. That's not fair. It's not okay. Um, so if, you know, listen, my my husband did come to me and ask for a divorce. Um, every other time that he wanted to break up with me, absolutely, goodbye. Um, but when we were married and he was moving his business from a small location to a bigger location, while we were still fighting well we had we'd recently stopped fighting but he hadn't noticed yet because his his fight or flight was in full activation and as far as he was concerned we were still the same way we were i knew that we had changed because it had been a while that i started meditating and so i already knew that i was on top of my behaviors but i recognized that he didn't quite recognize that yet so when he came home asking for a divorce i said you know because i heard the voice in my head the voice is quite loud and clear and it said, he's asking for this because he's so stressed out. He feels that if he takes one thing off his plate, he's going to feel a little bit better. And so I said, are you asking this because you feel like if you took one thing off your plate, you would feel a little bit better because you're so stressed out? And he said, yeah, I think so. And I said, I've been meditating for however long it was. 
I feel better. It has changed me. It shrank my amygdala. I am less stressed. I am less anxious. I am sleeping better. That was one thing that he was experiencing was he was not sleeping well enough. I said, I am sleeping better. It, it definitely has had an impact on me. Can I ask that you meditate for, I forget how long it was. Um, and if I, I might've said two weeks, I might've said a month. I might have said two months. I forget right now how long it was, but I said, can I ask that you meditate for this amount of time? And if after this amount of time you feel like you still want a divorce, I will give it to you because I want you to be happy. So that is an exception to that. You can, you could, you know, if, if you're, if you think that it's because you're so overwhelmed otherwise, and you're just one of the symptoms of their overwhelm. But if, if they want to break up with you because they feel you are the problem, you have a lot less of a negotiating power there. Um, and if you, I had some negotiating power because I've been working on me being the problem. And that's something I was able to put on the table is, hey, I have been working on this for the past little while. It has had an impact. Can you give us some more time, basically? Um, and then I had a solution that he could try that would help him with his emotions that I was already doing. Again, giving me more negotiating power. But if you don't have that, when somebody wants to break off with you, that gives you a lot less foothold to negotiate a, a staying in the relationship and an application of solutions. But nobody needs permission to leave somebody. Every now and then I get girls who are like, I wanna break up, but he won't let me. I'm like, girlfriend, you do not need permission. You do not need permission to not be with somebody who is not a good addition to your life. Am I wrong for being upset with my mother-in-law for helping my significant other's ex? You are because it's none of your business what other people decide to do. We are not here to control other people. We are here to manage ourselves. So that is a vomiting of your expectations on other people. I wouldn't do that, so you shouldn't do that. That hurt my ego. I don't like that you're giving attention to my my partner's ex. My ego certainly doesn't like that. That is your emotion to own. That is your emotion to deal with. That is your emotion to reduce. You don't have the right to go vomit on her and say you shouldn't have done that because I didn't like it. She gets to do what she wants to do. This is her life, her decisions. So you need to deal with your emotions on that. How do you get your partner on the same page when it comes to par parenting? You get with the person who's on the same page when it comes to parenting, and then you make a baby with them. You don't make a baby with somebody and then go, oh, okay, so let's talk about parenting styles. Oh, turns out we're different on parenting styles. Ooh, how are we gonna navigate that? You've put yourself in a pickle. Um, so how do you get them to be on the same page uh, on parenting? That's, that's pretty tough because you're saying, how do I change somebody's mind on how things need to be done? My husband had different parenting styles than what I would have done raising a kid because of how I was raised. I was like, you earn what you get. When I saw my husband giving his kids gifts willy-nilly, um, and they don't even have chores to do at home. I was like, yeah, you're you're raising people who are gonna be irresponsible. And he's like, let me do my thing. And this was when they were like, you know, 14, 15. And I said to myself, okay, we will see. And I stopped saying anything about how he was parenting because first of all, I don't have a right to say anything. They're not my kids. Um, ultimately, they turned out to be okay. They turned out to be okay and that's great. But um, here you made a kid with somebody and now you have these different parenting styles. You have an uphill battle. Uh, if you want to learn how to navigate this with, with your partner, with Ninja Mind Tricks, I really do suggest you get a coaching session so I can unpack your situation, find out what's going on, and then give you the workarounds. It's gonna help you get some cooperation from your partner. I need details though in order to do that. I can't do it on a live, unfortunately. I've been with my boyfriend for a long time, but I'm scared he's not the one I'm supposed to marry. Any advice? Uh, I would suggest you get a coaching session just so I can find out who you are, 
who he is, what's happening in the relationship, unpack all the behaviors. Brian, this isn't a dating page. been with my boyfriend for a long time I'm scared he's not yes 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 is it bad that I don't see a future uh in general in my life so get custom made this is a workbook that helps you discover what your purpose your talent is you what's happening is you're not being fired up right you're not inspired by yourself you're not inspired by your existence the meaning of life is literally finding meaning for your existence i've discovered the meaning of life because i have meaning for my existence i say to you guys i exist for you i breathe for you you are my oxygen your evolution is what feeds my soul the meaning of my life is to come here to you, teach you, help you, elevate you. What is the meaning of yours? We all have a talent. Yours might be woodworking. You know what I mean? Yours might be painting. Yours might be customer service in some way, shape, or form. But if you don't know yet, this is why you're like, I don't see a future for my life because you don't know what your purpose or your talent is. So grab custom made. Every single chapter ends with you writing figuring yourself out i introduce a concept i get you delving into yourself and flushing out that concept um and then what i teach you is how to monetize what you understand about yourself how to bring it out into the world so that people can see you're so good at this and pay you for it and this is how you start getting paid doing what you love this is what makes life exciting i get up every day ready to work because it doesn't feel like work it's just so inspiring like i am inspired by what i do so there's no work aspect to it like i've i'm just i'm in love with life i'm in love with life because i'm in love with what i'm creating um so whatever it is that you find about what your talent is start creating it start plugging into it on a daily basis and you will find yourself starting to get really jacked up about life and your existence um so i think that's a good place to start Hi, Queen. Can you talk about negotiations between Palestine and Israel, how to free? I can't because I don't know enough about it. Um, I don't really look at, at conflict on global scales when it comes to wars, uh, Ukraine, Russia, you know, uh, whoever is fighting with the US, uh, probably Canada has some conflicts going on in some places. I'm much more interested in sociology, psychology, anthropology, biology on the micro level. These are macro. These are these are big issues. Um, I understand there's a lot of micro going on with that, but my niche is dating and relationships, how we are going to get along with the person standing right beside us. Um, you know, if, if my talent can ever be applied, to helping uh, people in Israel and Palestines come together and see each other as human beings, I would absolutely show up for that. Um, I can't, but I can't comment on what is going on with the conflict. Um, I just know that it's not okay. And I know that what is also not okay is that is a conflict in one place in the world is spilling out into many other places of the world. Um, I'm not okay with anti-semitism at all in any way shape or form there is violence going on all over the place because of what is happening there that's not okay so I, for me that's my stance is we need to stop being chimpanzees we need to stop being so filled with conflict towards each other chimpanzees will literally tear each other apart they are constantly at war we have less than a five percent genetic difference between humans and chimpanzees but we also have less than a five percent genetic difference between us and bonobos we need to stop being chimpanzees we need to start being bonobos chimpanzees are male dominated and they are violent as fuck 
bonobos are matriarchal. They are peaceful as fuck. We need to stop with the violence. We need to stop with the wars. We need to stop with the conflict. Every single last person on this planet needs to start meditating. Shrink the amygdala in their brain, which is stress, fear, and anxiety, so they stop vomiting all this fear and turning it into violence. We need to enlarge our hippocampus, which is introspection and compassion, how we feel about ourselves and others. The more self-love we have, the less likely we are to be hateful towards others. So with all these conflicts that are going on, how about we take the focus off the conflict and get the focus on what will actually change us into better human beings? Let's get education into every single school. That's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about getting education into every single person's life. Because I think if we start this on a micro level, addressing individual people and getting everybody to start meditating, we will create a macro change, which is entire cultures changing for the better in the re you know basically coming to a reduction in war and conflict on a micro level person to person on a macro level um culture to culture advice on how to work best with your partner when you're about to move in together make sure you write down everything uh, write down every single thing, all the things that need to be paid for, all the responsibilities that need to be done. Uh, make sure you write down who's responsible for what and, and know this before you move in together so there's no fights that start with, oh, I thought you were going to do that. Uh, halfway through, no more assholes. Enjoying reading your book on my day off. Lovely, lovely. Thank you, Sam. I love it. Can your one-on-one aid on memory loss due to being in an abusive relationship? I need therapy. Yes, my love, it can. Yes, yes, absolutely. How do you know someone is leading you on? People will say anything, right? You can't trust what people say. You have to start trusting what they do. That's why I propose using no kissing for three months dating rule. Because people who are trying to be manipulative are selfish short-term thinkers. They don't have the patience to manipulate you for so long without getting what they want. What they want is access to your physical body. So no kissing, no sleepovers for three months is a barrier for them. And for most selfish short-term thinkers, it's too much of a barrier. You will find out actually very quickly when you introduce this rule, when you bring it up, their initial reaction is super telling but then you stick to the rule because sometimes people will like really put on a good face for that initial reaction stick to the rule don't let them wear you down stay on point with that rule and you will see who stays standing some people drop off at two and a half months i've seen it happen so you really do need to stick to three calendar months looking for consistent behavior that entire time. Don't let somebody be half-assed for two months, but then pick up the slack in the last month and go, that was three months. No, my love, it's three months of consistent behavior. The best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. If you take two months of inconsistent behavior and then one month of consistent behavior, what you can anticipate is one out of every three months, you may get consistent behavior. How do you get over a breakup? I have a book for you. It's called Come Back Queen. Come Back Queen. Hello. Is it okay to have silent moments? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Very okay. And that's something I teach in Fix That Shit, by the way. I teach it. It's okay for you to be quiet while you work through the thoughts in your head. It's okay to let your partner be quiet while they work through the thoughts in their head. How can I work on not being so reactive? Such a good question. You need to start meditating. Uh, by the way, those of you who feel reactive in your relationships, fix that shit is exactly what you need. 
Um, so it does start with meditation because meditation shrinks your amygdala, that's your brain's fight or flight. That's where stress, fear, and anxiety comes from. Those are the emotions that make you reactive. You have an overabundance of those emotions. It doesn't take much for you to vomit those emotions back at your partner. That's what reactivity is. When you reduce that part of your brain, you physically shrink it, which means you physically shrink your capacity to feel stress, fear, and anxiety. That changes your emotions, right? So you change your brain structure, which changes your emotions, which changes your reactivity, which changes your behavior. So get started on meditation. Go to my YouTube channel, y'all. Go to my YouTube channel. Go to my Let's Meditate playlist. Track number two is a 10-minute love signal. Start listening to that every single day with headphones at least once a day. If you feel particularly stressed, fearful, or anxious, twice a day get in minimum 20 minutes a day 10 minutes a day is like i feel good right i feel good i'm just gonna like stay on top of this 20 minutes a day is i'm fixing my shit so minimum 20 minutes a day maximum as much as you want the the more you meditate the more minutes you get in every single day uh the faster you start changing yourself Is it normal that my partner blames me for being manipulative? Uh, maybe, maybe not. Um, I would suggest a coaching session so that I can understand exactly what it is. How to change my mindset to not having my boyfriend as my life purpose? Such a good question, my love. You need two books. Fix that shit so that you understand how to relationship in a healthy, balanced way, custom made, to divert your focus. Your partner should be your main focus. Your partner is the icing on your cake. Your main focus is your fulfillment, which is your talent, your passion, your purpose. That is what you should be exercising. The, the majority of your time should be put into what your talent is. And then your partner being the icing on your cake is like, hey baby, I accomplished this today. Hey baby, this is what I learned today. Hey baby, this is what I did for somebody today. So your partner is where you get to share your success, your failures, your lessons, your goodness, your happiness, right? That's what it means to have a balanced relationship. So custom made is a workbook, make no mistake, after every chapter you will be doing some writing because you need to delve into yourself and understand what your life purpose is. So this this is heavy duty here, my love. This really, and then, and then I teach you, I literally teach you how to get it out there so you can start making money off of it. I want every single one of us. Guys, listen, like there are so many things that are being redefined right now. And one of them is where your income should be coming from. Like this is an opportunity to stop showing up for J-O-Bs that make you unhappy. Now is a time where you can redefine your life in so many ways. I'm teaching you how to redefine your relationship. I'm teaching you how to redefine who you're going to find for a relationship. I'm teaching you how to redefine how you get paid in life. I want you to get paid doing what you love. We all should be getting paid doing what we love because that waking up and going, yeah, I'm ready to do shit today. That's love right there. When you're ready to, to get to work and do things and doing that pays you, there's so much fulfillment and happiness in that. And I want this for all you guys. Can I straightforward ask my boyfriend if he's planning on marrying me? Absolutely. 100%. Yes. Yes, you can. Fix that shit is sitting on my counter waiting, nervous about what is yet to be uncovered. So fear not, my love. Um, fear not. This you, you will greatly enjoy this book. Um, if you're just ready for change if you're ready for change you are ready for this book which i know you are uh i gently guys where are my fix that shit readers say here i am where are my fix that shit readers say here i am and tell me what you think about what i'm about to say next do i not gently guide you through the changing process 
how much are your books? It depends. Uh, I don't know if Amazon uh, Canada still has my books on sale right now. They might. Um, but like you're going to pay $10, uh, about $10 for an ebook, about $20 for a paper bag, about $20 for the, um, the audiobook. If you get fixed that shit in audiobook. So my, my fix that shit readers, am I, am I gentle with you? Uh, in terms of teaching you how to change and modify yourself and take responsibility for yourself. I use that tip every day. Amazing. Love it. Yes, goodness, thank you. I accept you. Yes, goodness, thank you. I accept you. Never underestimate the power of the words inside your own head. Yes, your advice is very helpful, but also it does not feel judgmental. I love it. Yeah. And it's, and I'm not judging you because every single thing I teach you how to change is something I had to change. So I'm not, you know, we don't, we don't need to judge ourselves when we know better, we do better. Uh, here has helped me a lot. Yeah. So as I don't, you know, I'm, I'm just teaching you how to do things better. Um, guys, while we're here, does anybody want me to do a book walkthrough? Do we have some newbies here right now? Anybody want me to do a book walkthrough? I have eight books. Oh, just order custom made and fix that shit off Amazon. I can't wait. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Oh, book number nine is out any day now. Oh, I'm so excited. Yes, yes, please. Okay, so by the way, my dating book for men. Uh, who wants to see, before I do this, who wants to see the cover for my dating book for men? Um, it's out. Uh, it is out. It is out. Uh, book walkthrough. So it's going to be a couple more days before it shows up on Amazon. But the dating book for men is out uh i'm super excited let me see let me see do i have here it is here it is so this one let me take get rid of that so this one perfect play the Kindle version will be available in a couple days, uh, and then it's going to be about four more days for the paperback to be up on Amazon. I'm super excited. Super excited. Okay, book walk through. Yes, choose your favorite and go through it. Yeah, oh, my favorite is fix that shit. My favorite is fix that shit. Okay, so quickie book walk through. Come back queen. This is the book that helps you get over a breakup, whether it was yesterday or a year ago, if you're still hurting from a breakup, come back queen is the book that is going to heal your heart. Um, a lot of fantastic feedback on that book. The, the one I love the most is women telling me how often they've read it. So, uh, no more assholes. This is your guide on making sure your next partner is going to be super amazing a generous long-term thinker instead of a selfish short-term thinker. That's really important mindset. The mindset that they're in is so important to a healthy relationship. Um, like don't try to teach a good kisser how to be a good man. Get a good man and teach him how to be a good kisser, you guys. Trust me, it works. My husband's first kiss was shit. It was shit. He is now the best kisser I've ever had in my entire life. It took five seconds of teaching him and it's like, ah, oh, I can't get enough. Cannot get enough. Who saw the kiss video? Hi, I love your vibe in every video. Thank you. Who's who saw the kiss video with my husband? You know that that song there. Um, oh, I forget the one, but yes, yes, yes. Okay, anyways. Okay. After the first kiss. After the first kiss. Do you see that? I, that this is a painting that I have in my studio downstairs in my basement. I had this painting commissioned. Um, I saw, yes, wasn't that just the sweetest ever? I want to repost it again. I just, I want to repost it like every week, you guys. I've watched that probably like a hundred times. Okay, 
So once you find your incredible generous long-term thinker, you will transition from courtship phase to reality phase. After the first kiss helps you get through that, which with as little, as little insecurity as possible. Um, but fix that shit is going to help you deal with the heavy duty stuff. So this is the baggage that you brought into relationship from past trauma, from past relationships, from the fact that your parents maybe were not so great and didn't quite teach you how to relationship properly. So this book is going to teach you how to relationship. I just did a, when he loves you, that's the one. Yes. Oh, look at you. You just put me in a state. Okay. Um, I just had a chat with a 19 year old who used fix that shit to fix the two months of fighting that they were going through. They haven't had a single fight in two weeks now. Uh, do you recommend reading fix that shit together same time, but separately? So my husband has never read fix that shit. If your partner wants to read it by all means, if they're like, no, I don't want to, you can apply what's in the book. It will change your relationship. If you're with a generous long-term thinker who loves you. Custom made goes really good with fix that shit stick and wine um fix that shit teaches you how to relationship custom made teaches you how to not be codependent by really turning you on to your purpose and your passion so that you're not so hyper focused on your partner but instead are now focusing on self-love evolution and satisfaction um really creating your own happiness you guys it's so important to be able to make yourself happy your partner loves you more when you become somebody who's able to make themselves happy uh dating 101 this is understanding the drives behaviors and emotions behind love this is a textbook there is no swearing i did write this to go into high schools for sex ed um fake love need not apply this is a free ebook in the link tree in my bio this is a book giveaway um obviously if you want the paperback you're gonna have to go get it on amazon but this is how to avoid posers losers scammers and predators hello i love your videos and it make me so good i like all your videos thank you thank you now all those books are are about relationshiping but say yes to goodness is about living this is a book that's going to teach you how to have a happy happy life um, so there you go, you guys, you can get my books on Amazon or anywhere you buy books online. Fix that shit is available in audiobook only through the link tree in my bio, not through audible. I am making no more assholes in audiobook right now, by the way. Uh, so we are working through all the chapters, doing the, the voiceover and the editing. I do narrate my books just so you know, Kindle. Absolutely. You can find all my books on Kindle. Um, I finished Fix That Shit today, but I think it's too late. My boyfriend is going to break up with me. So still do what's in that book for the benefit of yourself, my love. That is part of growth and evolution is I do the right thing and I release the outcome and I know that things will work, will work out for me. So do what's in the book anyway, because you need it. You need to calm your mind. You need to control your emotions. You need to understand how to deal with yourself. You need to resist the impulse to vomit on others. Fix that shit is still going to help you become better and feel better. Um, so we shall see. But if you want a coaching session, um, see if there's something you can do or something, you know, to help you through these emotions, come get a coaching session. Um, Fix that shit was a great wake up call. Thank you for that book. You're so welcome, my love. I definitely needed it. My number one relationship rules, it's not fair to ask for anything you're not willing to do first. I don't ask you to do anything I haven't done myself. All the changes that are in that book is because I needed to change them. So I definitely needed a wake up call. I almost lost my partner. Maybe, maybe it is too late. Maybe it's not, but you still need this evolution. So anybody who wants to get a coaching session, hit that coaching button in the link tree in my bio, follow the instructions to book yourself in for a session. I've got one starting soon, so I'm going to have to pop off. Um, I love you guys. Go through the link to my bio. I've got links to my YouTube channel, links to my podcast. There's a meditation resource button. There's free books. There's a free long distance relationship guide, um, on how to maintain, create more intimacy in your relationship, resolve conflict, even over distance. Guys, go follow me on Instagram because I do a coaching giveaway every single month. I give away, I got you. Oh, my love. Uh, I give away a free coaching session, a one hour coaching session every single month on Instagram. Uh, if you go into the link tree in my bio, there's a free book. There's a long distance relationship guide. If you hit that meditation resource button, there's a meditation guide. There's a chart you can print out. What's the best book for a man? 
Single or in a relationship? Which one? Please help. I'm 23. I have zero self-confidence. What can I do? My love, get into no more assholes. Do what's in no more assholes. I teach you how to elevate your confidence, how to elevate your self-esteem. Because the one you want to be with is up here. You're going to go meet them up here. Because like attracts like. If your self-esteem is down here, guess what? You're attracting the down here people. And down here people are trying to step on you to elevate themselves. Not cool. You want to get with the up here up here people up here people are elevating you which is amazing you want to get up with those people so i teach you how to do that and no more assholes married uh best book for men married fix that shit this is the version for you and your wife to read together i am writing a version for you to read um that will be out by august if not sooner if not sooner how to drop their handkerchief such a good question oh you know what we're talking about here Go up, go up, son of a bitch. So I got stood up tonight. I got stood up tonight, story time. I'm on it, awesome. You drop the handkerchief, you need to go up to the person, you need to touch them. That touch, that physical touch breaks the bubble, gets their attention, <gasps> sucks them into you. And then you have a short conversation, make them smile, smile into their eyes, short conversation, and then, oh my God, I have to go, I have a meeting to get to. I'd love to get together and continue this conversation. Can I give you my contact info and you can get a hold of me? That's you dropping the handkerchief. What is that new book called? Then so I have a dating book coming out in a couple of days. It's like going on. Um, so that's gonna be uh that's called the perfect play. The 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 book for single men is called the perfect play. The book for men in relationships is gonna be fix that shit for men. My ex texted me happy birthday and proceeded to blame me for how things ended between us. Black. Black. I don't need this anymore. I don't need interruption to my good day. I don't need an interruption to my evolution. I don't need an interruption to my good vibes. I don't need to go into a mental spin for 24 hours because of you, motherfucker. Black. Do you have a book like your No More Insecurities course? Uh, I don't, um, I don't because part of the magic in the no more insecurity program that you take with me is that we tackle what happens to you. There are like, for instance, a client that I worked with recently, they went on vacation, group friend, one of the girls, she was like, oh, look, my implant and like her boyfriend and this girl used to be together. They're not together anymore. They see each other as like purely platonic, very much quite platonic. Um, but she's like, you know, having the girls touch her boob and she goes, oh, you can do it too, right? Here it is. Um, and so she, my client went on a funk until she booked a session with me and then I took her out of the funk. So part of the beauty of the No More Insecurity program is that we can help you through what puts you in a trigger spot because people's triggers are different and you, you need your own work through for your own triggers. Hi, Mama Queen. Hello, my love. Uh, should I believe a serial cheater can change? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Uh, I'm sort of seeing someone who makes time for me but does not want to give up being single. So what do you want? So he makes time for you. Great. You, you know what? He's Is he making time for you or is he making time for his PP? So he doesn't want a relationship, means he doesn't want to build a life. So he's not making time for you, he's making time for his pee, pee So do you want a relationship? Then stop spending time with somebody who's making time for his pee, pee and not making time to build a relationship. Do you have any book bundles? I don't, and I want to read them all. Uh, I know Amazon.ca right now is having a sale on my paper bags. What's that new book called? What would you recommend on working on yourself in order to get back with my baby daddy? Fix that shit. Fix that shit. In your opinion, what's a good age to move out or live alone? I left at 17. Depends what it's like at home. The worse it is at home, the, the sooner you should do it. Uh, what do you do if your husband is threatened by your income? Uh, what? um what stop talking about money 
stop talking about money. Like stop talking about money. Don't buy yourself expensive stuff. Take that extra money, put it in your bank account, yours, yours alone, your bank account. Take, take your money, put it in your bank account. Don't, why is my nose so itchy? Don't buy yourself pricey things because his little ego is being affected. The thing is, his until he learns to overcome his ego, he's going to vomit into the relationship and try and squish you down. Do not let him squish you down. Let him know that his emotions are his responsibility to deal with. Like, I want to talk to you about this. Are you... May I open this up? Girl, you going to come talk to me about this? I'm just... I'm opening up my... You can come you can come live with me right now. You can come have a conversation. I will take you in with this conversation. Um I want to take you in. Threatened by your income. Buiva, lovely. Come chat with me about this. Let's talk. I want to know. I want to know how this comes up. I want to understand how this is coming up for you. How do you love a woman without making her fall too quickly and go slow? Use a no kissing for three months dating rule, no kissing, no sleepovers for three months and stick to it. My girlfriend asked for a break. I've been too dependent on her. She's moving far soon. What can I do? Come get coaching, my love, so that we can help you with your self-esteem and your inner strength. Weeva, are you going to come on with me? He's perfect, but he lives far. I found out about your no kissing for three months rule after I got serious with him. What do I do? Uh, I don't know my love because I don't know the details of this person. It's I can't give you guys individualized steps. Um, if it's obvious, like, you know, should I forgive a serial cheater? Obviously no. Um, but when it, when it really does come down to the individuality of the people that I need to do in a coaching session, if you want clarity. So I got stood up who here, who here, I'm not sure why it bothers him. We share a joint bill, bill, uh, my whole check goes into it. So let's come and chat, come do a coaching session with me, love. Cause this is, this is not a good sign, not a good sign. So come chat live with me or come get a coaching session. You can get, you can click the coaching button in the link to my bio, but this does not bode well for you. And I really feel like you need some tools to navigate this. How do I get over my serial cheater X? I keep wanting to try because I was in love. Come get coaching session. What you're asking is how do I change how I think? How do I change how I feel? This is not a magic wand. This is not a generalized answer. This is one-on-one -on -one work. This is where you need to get into yourself and do some inner work to change what's happening inside of you. So who saw that live that I did on Instagram last week with that dating coach? What do you do if you're married to the wrong person? You get out of the relationship. Okay. Do, 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 do. How do I fight in a healthy way? Love it. You got to refix that shit. You have to do everything that's in that book. Um, you have to control your emotions. You have to control your behaviors. You have to understand what's worth saying and what's not worth saying. Uh, I believe there's some confusion between Colin and I. Does tomorrow work for you? If not, I totally understand. You've been exceptionally busy and apologize for hiccups during this planning. Of course, only the second time you don't understand what the hell's going on. Sure, Dylan, tomorrow works. Who saw that live last week with me in the dating coach? Can me my so um so one oh one if you want to work through this come get a coaching session. I just can't do coaching over a live. Could me and my ex talking a lot since the breakup mean anything? I don't know. 
Um, if you want me to help you clarify that, then I would need to get into the behaviors. So uh, you would need to get a coaching session for that, love. How do I gain back respect after being insecure and controlling? You have to change your behaviors and stay consistent with the behaviors because time does erase the old thing when it's replaced by a new thing. So basically someone's brain won't relax around the subject until there's been a significant amount of time that you have displayed the change behavior. Because the longer we view the change behavior, the longer we can anticipate the behavior will stay. So if you've been your new person, for one week, they can anticipate it'll last another week, but their brain says, but after a week is probably going to fall apart. So that's how you gain trust back by changing and being consistent with your change. I fought with my husband for 10 years. I vomited my insecurity into the relationship for 10 years. It took three years of me no longer doing that for him to trust that I was no longer going to do that. Is your Instagram the same username on TikTok? Yes, guys, go follow me on Instagram. We've been dating for 11 months, having a great time. I'm afraid to tell him I'm in love. Why? Gotta get a coaching session, love. Gotta get a coaching session. I don't know why you are afraid to say you're in love. I have to dig into your history. I have to find out what's going on in your life. I have to find out what the internal dialogue is inside your mind. I have to find out who he is, if any of his behaviors are triggering red flags. How do I stop vomiting my insecurities, the course? Yes, the No More Insecurity program. Um, there's a lot you need to learn a lot of tools you need to use, but in addition, you need to lean on me in your trigger points. In those moments where you want to vomit into the relationship, you need to come to me so I can de-escalate you so that we start creating a pattern of you not vomiting into your relationship. What this does is it starts creating space for goodness. When this space starts getting filled with goodness instead of vomits, that creates additional security in your relationship because you really do start to feel like it's more solid. Thank you, I will set one up. You're so welcome, love. Anybody who wants to get a coaching session or, or pick up on that No More Insecurity program, you will find the link to that in the link tree in my bio. It's the coaching button. And we both make a relatively decent income. Do you think we'll both be okay financially if we have a family? If you're good with money, here's the thing. You need to have, um, like, like your um, lifestyle needs to be a lot less than what you make. Uh, when you have kids, you you still need to have the have to have the ability to put money aside. Um, so if you're not saving yet, save now. If you don't have, you know, ten thousand dollars in the bank, don't have a kid because you don't know what's going to happen. If for some reason you're booted out of your home, you need to have money to live on for six months if you have children, because you need to give them that sense of security. You need to be able to offer them security. Does a no more security course work for those who are on a break from someone? Yes, yeah. How do I get over the past? You keep grounding yourself into the present and looking towards the future with optimism, using a plan to gain what it is you want to get to. What are my rates for coaching session? It depends what you take. Um, so go check out my bio. Go click on that link tree in my bio and click that coaching button. Take a look at my options. Can a toxic relationship return to a healthy one? That is possible. That is possible. I just started fix that shit. It's life changing. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Oh, I'm so here for this. I'm so here for this. I loved you. Do, 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 do.
Guys, if you want a notification when I go live, click my picture up here once or twice. You're going to get a pop-up. In the pop-up is a bell. Click on that bell if you do that. Say, I just did. I'm having a hard time to fall for divorce in a toxic relationship. Any advice? Girl, just do it. Just do it. Just do it. Whatever your emotions are, your emotions are not obstacles. Your emotions are fog. They don't stop your movement. Do what's right for you and get it done. Does a no more security course work well if I'm also going to therapy? Yes, absolutely. 100%. Yes. Yeah. I have a lot of people who use me in conjunction with therapy. Uh, so absolutely no problem. It will, it will not, uh, there will be no, no, no counter indications. You'll be fine. Yeah. Trying to help someone to change or grow so we can be together. That's not really it. So, um, they do need to be making their own decisions. Don't focus on them doing their changing and their growing. Be a leader. Say, I do this. Don't say you should do this. It should always be, I do this. This is the effect it has on me and, and have a standard, right? I won't be in a relationship with somebody who doesn't do the minimum to take care of their mental health. I won't be in a relationship with somebody who's jealous and controlling, right? Make sure you have your standards and stick to your standards. I won't be in a relationship with somebody who is inconsistent. It bothers me that he makes slightly less money than me. Am I being unreasonable? So, like, it's... Guys, I used to be a stripper, like seriously. For a long time, I made more money than the people I dated, right? Let's be honest here. It never bothered me um, because I was always willing to pull my share, but I was also always going to make them pull their share. I was never gonna get in a relationship where somebody wasn't doing their share of the relationship in some way, shape or form. I, in my first marriage, I, I said to my, my husband who was unhappy with the job he had, Go back to school. I'll pay all the bills. I, I don't mind. I just want you to be happy. Um, so, you know, it, it's, it's up to you. We all have our own thing that we're comfortable with, but know what your comfort zones are for sure. So if you don't want to be in a relationship with somebody who makes less money than you, then don't do that. But don't get in a relationship and then berate somebody and say, you need to be more than who you are. You need to work harder. You need to be more ambitious. That's not fair. You got into a relationship to change somebody. He works so much overtime, I hardly see him. What a good man. What a good man. I would be like, baby, can I make you breakfast? Can I make you a coffee? How can I take care of you? What can I do for you? I'm so proud of you for being so hardworking. You're, you're such a long-term thinker. I love how you're taking this time to use your youth and your strength. You're taking advantage of this now so that when you are older, you get to relax and we get to relax together and we get to have a better lifestyle because of all the work you're doing. I appreciate you. That's the conversation you need to have with him. And if you can't have that conversation because you don't understand what he's doing and you're being selfish, you're not thinking about him and his goals and what he needs and what he's trying to accomplish. You're thinking about your wants. You're thinking about how he can fulfill you instead of thinking about how you can fulfill yourself. You're thinking about whether or not he's making you happy instead of thinking about how you make yourself happy. Then this is not the right relationship for you. He needs to be with somebody who supports his goals. Uh, Ramu, what's your question, love? Women are listening to me all the time, my love. Women make up over 80% of my audience. Women love what I say because it wakes them up. It does. Uh, it, it really gets them better understanding men. Men, not guys. They learn to appreciate men more. I have a lot of women who reach out to me on a very regular basis and say, thank you. I needed to hear this. I appreciate my partner more. And because I'm appreciating them more, they are showing me more love. They are sh they are giving me more time. They are saying more words of affirmation. They are being more present and affectionate and communicative. 
My personal counselor and I have decided that I need to break up with him, but I'm codependent. Uh, can't get coaching, my love. I did know this, but sometimes I just get caught up still. You're welcome, my love. I see that Ramu wants to come live. What's your question, love? I am one of those women. Hello, lovely. Do you agree that men are only value for what they provide? No. That's such a that, that's a that's a that's one of those general statements that I do not agree with. I really don't. Um, I think you know there's here's here's what I think the problem is. I think the problem is women overlook how men provide. And they want men to provide like they're they're looking for familiarity, right? And so they're they're looking to be loved the way they're loving, you know, very open communication, um, very detail attentive. And men love differently because they have different brains. And so women actually overlook how men provide, uh, and and say you don't talk to me enough, you don't open up enough right so i think there's there's a misunderstanding between the genders uh what happens if a man says all you think about is other guys after three months of dating it means you need to dump the motherfucker he works so much he doesn't see our son is that okay or should i ask him to spend time with him so um so it's it's quantity over quality if you were saying he was out so much with people he doesn't see your son i'd say you know what you need to have a talk with him because there's that's not balanced he's not taking the time to raise his child working so much he doesn't see your son means he's intent on providing and that's how he shows his love this is a form of showing love that he's doing Instead of saying you should spend less time, you should manage to help him spend quality time with his son and ensure the two of them have quality times. Because at the end of the day, what is going to be important to this boy is the memories. It's the memories that get cemented in the brain. I don't remember if my dad spent two hours or four hours or six hours or 20 hours in a week with me. What I remembered was what happened in that time. How did I feel in that time? So if it's quality time, then that's the important thing. And if you can facilitate quality time, he gets to exercise his love the way that feels fulfilling to him and you get to feel fulfilled as a parent seeing the two of them have bonding happy quality time together i hope i can book personal sessions with you with you sometime i really look up to the way you think thank you my love what about very similar spouses? Women earns as much as a man. What about it? Doesn't sound like an issue. I don't, I don't, I see no problem in that statement. Uh, what happens if a man says, right, yeah, he gets to go. Any advice on feeling stagnant in a long distance relationship? I do have a long distance free download. It's a guide for you in my uh, link tree in my bio. Go to my bio, click on the link tree. You're going to see there's a free LDR guide in there for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. X broke up with me because I was moving too fast, but she told me she... Uh, okay. This guy said he cheated on his girlfriend that was eight months pregnant. Should I trust him? I would use a no kissing for a three months dating rule, uh, right? Like who cares what they say? Like, how are you showing up for three months? If he can't show up for you for three months with no kissing, no sex, no sleepovers. How 
How do I approach a conversation about balancing financial and physical responsibilities? It's a board meeting. So first of all, for 30 days, you need to track everything that's done and by who, and everything that's paid for and by who. Once you've done that after 30 days, you're gonna tally up the percentage of, of each one. So I call them the burdens, the financial burden and the physical burden. So then you're gonna calculate, okay, I pay this percentage of the financial burden. I in, the, in these past 30 days, I did this percentage of the physical burden. My partner paid this percentage of the financial burden, did this percentage of the physical burden. Then you go to your partner and you say, there's an imbalance here. So we need to figure out how you are either going to pay more of the financial burden or do more of the physical burden and let them come up like you know you can say like if you need to find somebody to do your part of the physical burden if you need to get a housekeeper to do your part of the physical burden that's totally fine with me um right so have it open to however they want to solve that problem on their part but if they are unwilling to be a part of the solution then what you need to say is i don't want to be in a relationship where i'm being taken advantage of the way things are going right now does not work for me and i won't stay in a relationship where i'm being taken advantage of but track it for 30 days don't have this conversation based on feelings you need to have it based on facts because perception is not always reality how can I make them open up to me? You need to create emotional security in a relationship. Men don't communicate if they don't feel emotionally secure. Uh, Fix That Shit has the steps on how to create emotional security in the relationship. So if you want a pretty cheap way of achieving that, I suggest you go get this book and start doing everything that's in that book. Uh, Thruples? I don't know. Like, I just, I, the, me, I answer problems. What's the problem? I, if you say advice for a throuple, I'm like, I don't see a problem until you present a problem. That's great. Having the data will make it much more civil conversation, 100%. Three months into a new relationship is expecting to see each other once a week, too demanding, too fast. Uh, listen, that's like, here's the thing. Um, this is something like do you know yourself do you know what you want do you know what you need should you have communicated that before getting into a relationship like how are you three months into a relationship a relationship like a relationship should be like i've chosen you to work towards building a life together getting married having kids like whatever your fundamental values are right this this is a conversation that should be had before kissing like you're three months in saying is it too much to ask to spend once a week together well didn't you pick somebody who's going to be your future husband or did you kiss a stranger and hope they were going to be the one and now you're on this oh i hope he's good journey um so you're in trouble here if you're three months in asking is it too much to ask to see them once a week you're in trouble are you actually in a relationship or are you committed to somebody who's not committed to you and that's why you're afraid to ask this question when your partner is busy uh blazing forward friendship fellowship is so important yes You want me, baby. The turtle. So what makes a dating expert? It seems kind of subjective. So a dating expert is somebody who is actually successful in acquiring a relationship with a good person, right? Not, not a player, not a toxic person, not an abusive person, but actually successful at acquiring a relationship with a good person and then building a healthy relationship with that person so that you get off the dating merry-go-round there's a lot of single people teaching you how to date great they're teaching you how to stay on the merry-go-round because they don't know how to get off it themselves so a successful dating expert is somebody who actually knows what they're talking about when it comes to choosing and committing and building a relationship 
So getting from point A all the way to the end of point B, not just staying stuck on point A over and over again. So if people aren't dating to be married, why do they even date? Some people just want to play and that's totally fine. That's, there's two different mindsets, selfish short-term thinking, generous long-term thinking. People who just want to date to play, like short-term thinking, here today, gone tomorrow, you know, that's that's a separate mindset. That's guys or girls. People who are looking for a committed long-term relationship, that's, you know, generous long-term thinking. I want to take care of somebody for a long time. Um, so this is men and women. So there are two different mindsets of dating. There's casual dating just for casual fun. And then there's relationship dating for a committed long-term relationship. Each of them require different behaviors. If you're looking for something short-term, this is how long your list is. Am I attracted to them? And do I trust them? If you're looking for a long-term relationship, future baby daddy, future husband, future going to make major purchasing decisions with, right? It's a much longer list. You need a lot more characteristics and integrity in that person, a lot more compatibility, a lot more things need to line up, like goals and timelines. So that over here, you got to use a no kissing for three months dating rule. Actually vet somebody before you kiss and commit. Here it's like, oh, you're sexy. I'm going to, you're sexy. I can trust you. I don't think you're going to kill me. I'm going to kiss you right now. I'm going to take you home tonight, right? So very different mindsets and two different kinds of dating. Thank you for being so transparent and teaching and coaching through experiences. That's what makes me good at what I do is, is I'm like, hey, look, I'm not just textbook teaching. I didn't just read some books and, and, and watch some videos and, oh, let me teach you now because I'm an expert. No, my guy actually been through it, done it, succeeded. Success. Success is what makes you an expert. I can't find the long distance thing you were talking about. Um, so here's the uh, my bio, my link tree. Open anyway. I hope that didn't just blitz my. Uh, so free LDR guide under free book. How do I know if the person is interested in a relationship? I can ask that. Yeah, 100%. You should ask that. Also using no kissing for three months dating rule because a lot of guys, a lot of selfish short-term thinkers will say what they think you want to hear just to get in bed with you. Any advice for couples marry young? I'm 23. He's 22. Yes, get fix that shit. Do what's in that book so you can have a conflict-free relationship. You explain very well, thank you. Just out of a four year long emotionally abusive relationship, therapist, psychologist, psychiatrist, coach, solutions. The difference between a therapist, psychologist, psychiatrist, and a coach is I'm I'm the football coach. I, I don't I don't stand on the sidelines and and get you to talk to me about how you're playing the game. I get on the field with you and I teach you how to play the game. Does the No More Insecurities course have a payment plan? Uh, I can set up a pay payment plan, but just understand that like everything needs to be prepaid. Um, so we can set up a payment plan, but it just, it, it extends the period of time over which you're doing your normal and security course and what it takes away. If your sessions are not prepaid is your ability to book on the fly. Like I'm going through something right now and then, and then we get into the weeds on it. So I can do a payment plan. Found a job three hours away. Three hours away, leaving boyfriend of three and a half years and house behind. This is so hard. Took a ton of courage. Yes. Do you have a book recommendation for just leaving a four-year emotionally abusive relationship? Yes, my love. Come back, queen. Come back, queen. I have a boyfriend. He wants to kiss. I'm not ready. And I saw him cheating on me. That's not your boyfriend anymore. 
that's not your boyfriend. You're too you're too valuable to think that's your boyfriend. That's not your boyfriend anymore. You, you know what you said to yourself? I'm dumping the motherfucker. Not your boyfriend anymore. When somebody cheats on you, they're not your boyfriend anymore. I liked your last TikTok about the guy saying you want me. <laughs> I love you. I love you. You want me. Hi, bestie. That was fun. That was fun. You want me. I want you, baby. Oh, hell no. How's my feed, you guys? Is the feed okay? Do, 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 do. Hi. Hello. So I came on early tonight because I was supposed to do a live with a male dating coach, but uh, he stood me up. He stood me up. It's great. Any general tips for being in a relationship while in school? Uh, put school first. Make sure you don't fight. Uh, you know, you really develop a superpower if you can be in a relationship that's supportive and without conflict. So get fixed that shit if you guys have any conflict in your relationship because when you remove the conflict, you will be much better able to focus on your schooling. Can you talk about how to respond to a partner who oversteps your boundaries? Uh, so in what way, my love? Do you want to come live with me? Live? Do you want to come live with me? I have it opened up that you guys can come live and have a conversation with me. How did you and your husband meet? I, girlfriend, I used to be a stripper. He came into the club. He saw me. Game over. He came to see me for two and a half years after that on Wednesday nights. A dating coach stood me up. Yes, that doesn't sound like a good dating practice, right? Yes. I love you. Your approach of being direct but gentle is really helpful. Thank you. If you have bedroom questions, I only do those on one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. What is it when a girl makes you feel like she's so in love with you and then drops you in a few days? I don't know in her case. I don't know in her case. Why did he stand you up? I don't know. Apparently there's a mix up. I don't know. Can you give a quick synopsis on Fix Sasha? Yes, my husband has really responded to the direct but gentle method. They do, they do, they do. Oh, I want to read this again. My husband has really responded to the direct but gentle method. Absolutely, they do. Men are adults. And they are, uh, men are adults, for one thing, right? They don't want to be treated like a child. Their communication is very simple. Uh, in other words, they don't use excess words to say what they want to say. They're very direct with their communication. They use fewer words to say what they want to say. So when you do that, you are speaking their language. When you treat them like an adult and you are very plain and direct with your language, you're literally speaking their language and they love that. He loves being told exactly what I want. It's hard for me because sometimes I expect him to know. Expectations are a story you create inside your head. When you find yourself upset about something, I want you to ask yourself, did I create an expectation? Did I tell myself something and then become disappointed when it didn't come true? The direct but gentle method is, is just taking responsibility for your feelings for one thing um, and, and just saying, I'm not telling you what to do. You're free to do what you want. I need, that's been helping. Yes. He asked me directly if it would be okay if he went and I said it would hurt my feelings if he left. Yes. Not to expect. Yes, for sure. We're getting a story here. Do 
you have a checklist of questions to ask and resolve before moving in together? Older couple, um, make sure there's a clear understanding of who's responsible for what in terms of what is getting paid for and household chores. So fix that shit. Uh, fix that shit is the book that's going to help you guys get to zero, zero, big fat zero fights in your relationship. Not a joke. Uh, not a joke. My husband and I fought for 10 years. We haven't had a single fight in five years. Uh, I teach you how to manage your emotions, reduce your own feelings of anxiety, stress, and fear. I teach you how to think through your own, uh, stressors. I teach you how to not vomit into your relationship. I also teach you how to understand your partner better, how to understand yourself better, by the way. That's very important. Um, I teach you how to resolve conflict in a healthy way, in a way that doesn't create any defensiveness because once there's defensiveness, people literally don't hear what you're saying. Um, and I teach you how to bring up those difficult conversations so that they hear what you're saying and want to be a part of your solutions. What book do I read to get over a bad breakup? Come back queen. Yes, indeed, my love. Come back queen. And can I refix that shit? If I'm single, yes. It really does teach you how to relationship well. Knowledge is power. Hey. So it, it really gets you going into relationship knowledgeable about how it needs to work and be functional. So come back queen is a book that's going to help you get over a breakup. Do you guys want me to do a book walkthrough? I wrote eight. Number nine is coming out. Holy fuck. Guys, so this is my handful of books. If there's going to be a point, I'm going to need two hands for these. Crazy. Thank you for the fire. My childhood trauma is destroying my adulthood. How to change, block those thoughts. You need to come get coaching in order to work through this, my love. Um, it's not a quickie answer or a magic wand. It is a process when you're saying, how do I change how I think? How do I change my emotions? How do I change the behaviors I feel compelled to do? Who wants, who wants a book walkthrough? Yes, please. Perfect. I just bought all your books. We'll be reading it in the next few weeks. My books are gateway drugs. Do you have a book recommendation for men going through the same thing? Um, so going through the same thing, this, this is a puzzle piece for me. Oh, like a breakup. Um, so my dating book for men is actually preceded by a, a section called first things first, where I do help them navigate through, uh, their, like their last breakup and get through their feelings so that it prepares them to get into their next relationship. That book is coming out in a couple of days on Amazon. So do watch for that book walk through. Yes, we have a couple of yeses for the book walkthrough. So let's let's do that. Uh, okay, Come Back Queen. This is the book that helps you get over a breakup. You can get my books on Amazon or anywhere you buy books online. I do have an audiobook, which is Fix That Shit. You can only get it through the link tree in my bio, though. Uh, after Come Back Queen, you're going to get over your last relationship, whether it ended yesterday or a year ago. This book is going to help your heart heal. No More Assholes is a book that's going to help you find your next relationship. Make sure you get with a generous long-term thinker, not a selfish short-term thinker. Um, getting in a relationship with a selfish short-term thinker is literally a recipe for disaster. As men, can we read your books and apply them to our lives 100%? Yes, you can. I told my wife we are reading Fix That Shit. That's so amazing. What would she say? <laughs> what did she say? What did she say, my friend? Uh, after the first kiss, this is a book that you read after you get into your relationship with your generous long-term thinker. This helps you transition from courtship into reality phase without vomiting insecurity into your relationship because it helps you understand what to expect in terms of the changes that are going to take place. She said, let's do it. Oh, wifey, that's so amazing. I'm happy to be on your side, my love. You guys are going to do so amazing. I can tell you are both generous long-term thinkers who love each other. You are so going to create magic. That's so good. Can you explain about menopause, why women have hormone problems? Um, you think I'd be able to? Um, 
here's here's the thing though like i ser like there are moments where i would have a vomit on my husband and then i go think like what happened and that's what you need to do right when you vomit into your relationship your next step is to go oh where'd that come from and figure it out and then deal with the issue however you need to so i know about hormones because i actually am menopausal like i had my uterus taken out when i was in my early 30s my ovaries shut down shortly after that i went into full menopause uh like at 40 um so way too early they put me on the patch right estrogen patch to halt that because it was too early and it's just dis literally disintegrating my body um so i do understand that sometimes i have too much estrogen sometimes i have too little and it i that i'll vomit um, so the thing about menopause and hormones is whatever the reason is for your vomit, figure it out, address it however you need to, and then apologize to your partner. Baby, I'm sorry for vomiting on you. I realize that I've been particularly hormonal lately. Um, I put another patch on me, right? Or I did some meditation. I'm in a great relationship with no problem, but I love listening to you. So many people can learn. Thank you, my love yes <laughs> you're so cute uh okay after the first kiss we're doing a book walkthrough guys so after the first kiss is how you transition from courtship to reality phase uh yes you're so welcome lovely uh fix that shit is the book that's going to help you unpack the emotional baggage you're bringing with you so trauma from past relationships parents not quite doing their job um whatever it is that that you know you're vomiting an overabundance of stress fear and anxiety i'm going to help you unpack that baggage heal yourself calm yourself feel better love yourself more understand your partner communicate better with your partner get them communicating better with you so that you guys stop having conflict in your relationship all together i know what i'm talking about hubby and i fought for 10 years we haven't had a fight in five years now how long do you meditate for so at this point um about 20 minutes a day but like if i'm feeling extra then 40 minutes uh, which book is this? This one is Fix That Shit. This is the one that's going to help you heal your relationship, unpack your emotional baggage. If you need an audiobook, you can get that through the link tree in my bio. Custom made, guys. This book is, all my books are magic. All my books are magic. But custom made and fix that shit go really well if you're codependent. If your partner is your purpose, your source of happiness and satisfaction and fulfillment, um you that's that's so not good because you can't look to another human being and say make me whole you need to make you whole and part of what makes you feel really good about yourself and your existence and and really like jack you up with happiness is practicing your purpose but we are raised in an educational system that diverted us from our talent they literally said oh you get good grades in that don't worry about it but you suck in this put more focus into it put more time into it get better at what you suck at Take your focus off what you're good at, get better at what you suck at. So a lot of people lost track of ourselves, right? So custom made is gonna put you back in touch with yourself so that you can understand what your talent is, which direction you should be going in, both get jetty. And then I also teach you how to monetize that. So I will teach you how to um, figure yourself out. Look at this, it's a workbook, you guys. Every single chapter ends with an exercise. And then I'm gonna teach you how to make money off what you're really super good at. So you start getting paid doing what you love, which is exciting. You wake up every day not thinking about how your partner's gonna fulfill you. You wake up every day thinking, I'm ready to do this. I'm ready to be fulfilled, which is so incredible, you guys. Do I just sit quiet and try to not think? Um, so there's, like meditation is, is a lot easier than you think it is. I do have a meditation resource button in the link to my bio. I also have a video that introduces you to meditation in my Let's Meditate playlist on YouTube. So check those two out, you guys. Um, I really do try to make it so super easy to get into meditation. I'm back in the USA so I can watch your live stream at a normal time and not at 5. Hello, Posky Jerry. Not at 5 a.m. You're so awesome. So awesome. Dating 101, you guys. Uh, there's no swearing in this book. <laughs> there's no swearing. I uh, can't say that about any of my other books. This one, there's no swearing. Um, so mamas and papas, get this one for you teenagers. What's my purpose? This is my purpose, what I'm doing right now. My purpose is to educate you on how love is actually easy. Everything we've been taught has, has taught us that love is hard. 
that is disinformation and misinformation. I am now re-educating you on how love is actually easy. Uh, fake love need not apply. How to avoid posers, losers, scammers, and predators. This one you get free as an ebook in the link to my bio. Just click that free book button and go get it. <clears throat> You're amazing and inspirational. Thank you, my love. Uh, is it normal for your partner to be attracted to other people more than just looks? Uh, we are not monogamous by nature. Our attention certainly does get pulled from time to time. Um, but looking is not uh, cheating. Behavior is cheating. So if their behavior is beyond simply just looking and seeing, uh, then that starts to get into territory where you need to start having some serious talks. Say yes to goodness. Uh, how did you find your passion as a writer? I had a seed planted in my mind about five years before I wrote my first book. You know the voice, you know, capital T, capital V in your head that talks to you? It said, you have a book inside you. And I went, Whoa, really? What? Uh, I never thought about that before. And it's like, yeah, you got a book inside you. I was like, oh, okay. Um, so it just kept growing. Just the notion that I had a book to write just kept growing and growing and growing. And then I decided to become a dating coach. That in itself is a big, long story. Um, and then I wrote my first seminar. And as soon as I wrote my first seminar, The Voice, capital T, capital V, said, that's your book. And I went, oh, oh, damn. Okay. And then I wrote my first book. What do you think is the best time of day to meditate? you got to find your own sweet spot. Uh, how long does it take you to write a book? It takes me about three months. Uh, so say yes to goodness, guys. This is a life lesson book. This is a book that teaches you about 10 different areas of your life that affect you and how you can navigate that in a way that is really functional and healthy. I'm feeling a bit hopeless. My wife has been deceptive in couples counseling multiple times. Uh, I would suggest you come and get coaching sessions with me. Come get coaching sessions. Uh, my loves, I'm going to head out. I'm going to head out. Uh, I'm going to give you guys one more chance to uh, get you, get yourself set up for a notification when I go live. Um, oh, if your voice in your head says you're not good, come get coaching. We got to fix that, okay? Um, we got to fix that. So those of you who want a notification when I go live, click my picture up here once or twice. You're going to get a pop-up in the pop-up Isabel. All of my coaching sessions are on Zoom. By the way, my clientele is international. I coach people everywhere from Denmark all the way to Australia and New Zealand. Thank you so much for your live stream. You're so welcome, love. Um, so, yeah. Make sure you go follow me on Instagram, you guys, because we're doing that coaching giveaway again soon. Uh, go hit up the link tree in my bio. Go get your books on Amazon or anywhere you buy books online. They are waiting for you. And that book for Single Man is coming out in a couple days. I'm super excited, you guys. So I'm going to head out. Uh, I'm going to go do some more work. Mwah! I love you so much. I'll be back soon. You know I will because I never stay away for long. I love you guys. Mwah! I'm going to talk to you soon. Make sure you have, you're welcome. Make sure you have a fantastic rest of your day, okay? <laughs>